Good morning. Welcome to the November 17th, 2016 Downtown Design Review meeting. <sighs> Sorry to be out of breath. Um, first, first things first, please silence your phones, pagers, or anything that might inadvertently make noise. Hope everybody has had an opportunity to read the minutes. Do we have a motion? Oh, sorry. Roll call. Betsy Brunstetter. Present. Gigi Faulkner. Present. Charles Ainsworth. Present. Corey Bates. Present. Nathaniel Harding. Present. Connie Scothorn. Present. Danielle Terrio. You have a quorum. Great. Um, okay, now, I hope everybody's had a chance to read the, the minutes. Do we have a motion? Move to approve the minutes. Got a motion and a second from Daniel. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We have no cases withdrawn. We have two continuance requests. Are there any people here that would like to talk about any of these continuance requests? No, we're asking, the applicants are asking that they be continued to the December 15th. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion on that? Move to approve the continuance request. Second. That was Faulkner and Ainsworth. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? To December 15th. Oh, to <laughs> December 15th. Do we, do we need to mission? Okay. All right. Um, there's nothing on the consent docket. We have um, some con cases for individual consideration. First case is 1000 North Hudson. Is the applicant present? My name is Zach Woods. I'm with Gardner Architects at 401 Northwest 23rd Street. Madam Chair, uh, I will be abstaining. Okay. Thanks, Corey. Um, could you repeat your name, please? Zach Woods. Okay. Laura, do you want to talk about the project? Okay. Um, the project before you um, was prior to the starting of the work, there was a certificate of approval issued uh, by administrative, administratively by staff. Um, subsequent to that, there's been one revision, and the revision before you, um, okay, let me back up. Um, there was a revision previously to the dumpster location. Um, there was an appeal filed to that revision, which is currently, I guess, the, on hold. Um, it has not been presented to the Board of Adjustment yet. Um, the applicant, uh, the person filing the appeal, requested it be on hold. Uh, it, they were trying to work out the, the details and see if they couldn't agree on a dumpster location. Subsequently, staff received another revision to change the location again. Um, and what I'm showing you here, that yellow square on the left, is the new proposal to be located um, kind of adjacent to the transformer that they put there. Um, the person that filed the appeal is here today and um, to speak to this request before you. Um, staff would say that the proposed location, the screening proposed meets uh, ordinance requirements uh, and therefore we do address several things in the staff report but um, the issue on this is it's going to need a variance because of the required height for the screening and the location um, and so not location, just the screening height and because of the density. location that the screening height is an issue, and so um, right, because we, this location is now in a front yard, front yard fence, and that issue has come before before the committee before. Yeah, we've um, had several that in the have had front to get yard. Pants. There are um, um, oh, uh, transparency requirements. There's height requirements uh, that have to be met. So we do have recommended condition of approval that they get the variance and um, 
the need if you are so inclined to recommend approval of this, um, you would also need to recommend um, a, approval of it to the Board of Adjustment. So um, that, it's kind of just a summary um, on the project. I'll just uh, preface. I, the committee might not be immediately familiar with this project because the, um, the original application and the subsequent revisions were all under the administrative approval threshold. But this is the redevelopment of the old Swanson's Tire Center where the new Barrios restaurant just opened and some other things are planned. And just for clarification purposes, I referenced that yellow square that you're looking at on the slide is the proposed lo location now. And what I wanted to point out is um, if you look at the slide on the left, that's actually the alley. Um, the proposed location is to the right of that, and the uh, person that had appealed the location who is here to speak to this today um, is the building on the left, which is, if you look to the slide on the right, that is their building, which is located adjacent to the alley, just for point of reference on where they are in relationship to the project. So this is the transformer right here, and the proposed location is to the right of that, which would be right here. Okay. okay, thanks. <clears throat> uh, sounds like we need to hear from the person that would like to oppose this, right? My name is Mark Weimer, and I am the owner of 309 Northwest 9th that is on the east side of the alley adjacent to the property that we're here today talking about. <clears throat> what she is handing you is three pictures. That is the front of the building, and it shows the alley to the left in the picture. Uh, then there's a second picture that shows the transformer in relation to the alley and where the dumpster would be, would be to the left of that. Uh, the issue that I have with this is that in the original certificate of approval, it was shown to be to the north, and you can see that in, I believe, the second picture, to the, all the way to the north. Uh, then in June, a revision was done, and it was still shown in the same place, and the size of it was about 120-some square feet for the enclosure. Okay. In September, it was then moved to, in the second revision, it was moved to the, immediately to the north of the transformer. The size of it was still about 120 feet. Uh, we had tried, the, both parties had met and talked about the, uh, the location of this dumpster, and uh, uh, we did not get anywhere. Uh, we filed this appeal, and since we filed the appeal, we've learned now that the, the uh, size of the dumpster is now 240 square feet. There's now three uh, four-yard dumpsters located within this trash enclosure. And uh, my understanding is that all these properties that you see up here are going to use this dumpster, three of which are restaurants. Now, our air conditioners are on the top of the building. Currently, uh, I bought that building in 2002, and I've seen a lot of change in Midtown, and I'm, I'm really glad to see it, and I'm glad that the city is supporting that. But putting this dumpster that accommodates all these locations, some of them haven't even been leased at this time. We don't know if there's going to be more restaurants, and there's room for another dumpster within the enclosure. So then the, the 12 square yards can go to 16 square yards of trash, just across the alley from, I just leased this building in August to a law firm that's been in Oklahoma City for many decades, Miller Dollar Hyde. And uh, uh, so now they're going to have to, unfortunately, deal with rodents, bugs, in the, in the heat of the summer, uh, because our air conditioning units are on the roof, the north side, and they're required to be open a certain amount to get fresh air in there, uh, the odors are, can be pulled into the building. 
They also own the property, which is not shown on here. You see seven parking spaces just below what is 1000 North Hudson. And across the street, the third picture is a parking lot. And they have a temporary dumpster in that parking lot. It is not adjacent to any building. There is no three-story building or two-story building that can look down on the trash. And I don't understand why that is not a compromise. We discussed that at one time, and I was immediately told that's simply not an option. But that is being used by parking. It's across the street from 1000 North Hudson, just immediately to the south. And that seems like the most intrusive area into everyone. Uh, you know, the street having a seven foot fence for 20 foot along there seems, seems uh, kind of contraproductive to all the landscaping that's going in along there. But I, I keep going back to the, the size of this, of this is, uh, is overwhelming to me uh, because everyone's going to use it. And so I notice in the staff report it talks about convenience and it talks about the negative attributes of trash enclosures located too close to the building may have detrimental effects to the business. Well, yeah, that's true, but, but I didn't choose a business. I didn't choose what goes in there. You know, and so for them to, to affect this, this building, this value, this tenant, seems patently unfair. And so I respectfully request that uh, uh, you consider moving it back to the north or they, they consider moving it into their parking lot across the street where it doesn't affect any business. So you would like to see it move to the north end of that same area? Well, that, that up was against where, the alley? The north up to the building where it originally was in the original certificate of approval and in the first revision. Do we have that? The ideal location, I believe, is across the street, but they never, they have never put forth. Do they actually own the land across the street? They do own the land across the street, and their temporary dumpster is currently there. It's a convenience factor in that all of these, these businesses have got together and decided that they're going to use this location for all of them. So they d simply don't want to have to walk over there to put their trash in. So it's become a convenience factor. And I should, don't think that convenience should override uh, what's being done to the area. They've done a fantastic job on, on uh, developing the area. I'm, I'm proud that, that we're next door, but I don't want to see the trash. I don't want them to smell the trash. I don't want it to become, it's so large. But you'd be okay with it on the north end of this? Well, if the, it's between there and all the way up to the north, if those are my two choices, you know, I would rather have to the north, off the street and farther away. The wind blows generally in the south in the summertime. Uh, it, I would think it would have less chance of being intrusive into Miller Dollar Hyde. And so I think of those two options, uh, yes, certainly back to the north where they had it would be okay. Uh, okay. I was told it was simply moved because of there's a pizza place going in and they have a deck on top of the building and so they don't want to see it and they don't want to smell it. So they want to move it out but yet it's their trash. Okay. It's going to be part of their trash. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would the applicant like to respond to that? I don't dispute anything that he's he's saying here. We've we try to work something out and um, uh, and this is kind of where we need to settle as, a, as me as being an owner's rep and representing the development of the, of the property. Um, the south property is not really an option for this development because long-term um, long development is, is unknown. That, that site could be developed and then we're back to square one. Where does the dumpster go? Um, and we really have the right to put a dumpster on our own property that's within the means of all the design guidelines and, and we feel like we're meeting those except for the height requirement that we're asking for your your vote on on the variance today. Would you be willing to move it back to the back side of the? I can't commit to that. Um, I, you know, the only the only locations I can commit to are the two that he's appealing. Um, the one up against the building um, was a stipulation of their lease. So the ownership groups have agreed that that dumpster will not go there. Um, 
as as a lease agreement they would not sign their l o i unless they were able to that dumpster not be there so the so there's an agreement amongst the owners that they can't put the dumpster there so i have two locations i can put it on the site either to the west of the transformer or to the north of the transformer those are the only options that i'm being given so um, i ask that you guys vote on this location today um, the variance that we're asking for um, for the fencing um, and if if uh, whichever way that goes it will default back to the one we already have approval for which is north of the of the transformer i have a question about no the original proposed location, like with the proximity to the, um, the building across the alley, mm -hmm. if it is moved north, does the, I guess in my mind, from what I can see, the proximity to that building is no different. It's not any closer or further from that building. Essentially, it would be the same. Yeah, it's just, um, it would be, I mean, yeah, you're talking about 50 feet. And then for the variance requirement, I have a question about that. Is it because this fence is taller than what's allowed? And also the construction material, because it has to be solid to do the screening. And in the front yard, we don't allow the solid fencing. So if the, if the uh, dumpster enclosure was moved to the north side of the transformer, does that change that variance issue? Correct. They don't need it because it's no longer in the front yard. And that the location north of the trans, jet immediately north of the transformer, that was administratively approved, and that's what is being appealed by the adjacent property owner, that location. Just north of the transformer is what's being appealed? Right. And that's at the Board of Adjustment right now? Yeah. We have not, we have not submitted it to Board of Adjustments. We're waiting on today's. It, oh, okay. it, no, it's, it's been filed. It's, it's pending. It's not been heard. It hasn't been heard. It's not queued oh, up okay. on an agenda date. It's just been filed to protect the uh, adjacent property owner's right to appeal it. Right. It appears to me that just north of the transformer would be a better location for it. Um, then it wouldn't be on the street. It wouldn't be uh, impeding the pedestrian experience. Um, we don't. Yeah, we don't disagree with you. We would it open onto the alley? Yes. Trash pickup would be off of the alley. I understand uh, that there are smells and, and um, various issues that come with with dumpsters for for restaurants, but I don't know that we have any choice. This is a restaurant that uh, will need a dumpster. It's not if you would like to come forward. It's not a restaurant. It is a number of restaurants that need a dumpster, and they've all decided to, to conglomerate and cre create one dumping place for this trash. And when I speak of north, north up against the building, mm -hmm. of, of, uh, he said that that person wouldn't sign a lease. Well, then, then what do I do when we put it here, and when this lease expires and someone doesn't sign a lease, what is, what is my recourse? Is my recourse where? Where does it lie? I'm no different other than, than they have just, they have built this property and given only this section uh, for this dumpster. And now they want to hold on to this other property because they want to develop it? You know, that, that doesn't make sense to me. I understand it's a parking lot and they're going to use it for parking for this restaurant. They don't have enough parking places. They use it in another lot, uh, catty corner from the restaurant. And so it will continue to be a parking lot. And uh, I don't understand why they can't put it there uh, as opposed to having all this trash from this quarter of a block. Everyone's going oh, to visit. You, you think that they should put it across the street? I think if, if given, yes, of the options, it's temporarily right there. It's a parking lot. It, it's not against any building. It doesn't abut any building. And so I don't understand why they won't put it there where they're in the area where they're using for parking because well, they want to hold on to it. The applicant was, was correct in saying we're hoping that that other lot will be developed mm -hmm. and then they would ha be back here again. So well, anyway, 
Thank you. Let's let's uh, deliberate a little. I've got two or three questions. You know, to me, um, you can't inhibit the, the owner from developing the site across the street. So I think you've got to put the dumpster on the site somewhere. I, I have personally been through this in a building. I've had restaurants in a building. I've had trash containers. And I think it's more of a housekeeping issue on how often the trash gets picked up and how they handle that because they're going to have a million people going in that restaurant. And if they've got odors and, you know, flies or whatever, they're going to be impacted as severely, if not more severely. Um, so I think, um, I'm, you know, and, and honestly, I don't see where it's our purview to necessarily pick where the dumpster goes anyway. I mean, I think it's an issue of the screening um, that would be in our ballpark. But I, as always, I mean, we've seen these deals before, and I always hope that, that as we get into this urban environment that the neighbors can figure out a way to get together. I mean, if you're always mad at these guys and they're always mad at you, I mean, that serves no purpose whatsoever. So um, if you don't care where the dumpster goes and you're happier with it being on the north, I, I don't see an issue with that. I want to clarify them. They do not want it on the north of the transformer. They want it on the north up against the building. My question to you would be, what's the difference on to both of you? The difference is I'm, I, I, I can't approve the north of the building. Um, that's a developer issue that they've made agreements with their tenants and other developers. And, and, and so that is the two locations that are one that has been approved administratively is directly north of the transformer. Right here where I've got the hand. And that's the location that the appeal was filed on. Well, that <laughs> evidently there's a lease for the building on the north that says that the dumpster can't be directly adjacent to it. Is yeah, their right? agreement was that the dumpster would not go up against the building because they have a rooftop deck that they will have patrons on that will be directly above okay. that dumpster. So the dumpster to the north of the um, of the transformer has already been administratively approved. We wouldn't have to vote on that one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's already been administratively approved and appeal is pending. So there's nothing for the board to do. Just take action on, on, the, on this proposed location. But I, I would say that the, the one to the north of the, the transformer is definitely a better location from a design standpoint. Um, we have someone else that would like to speak. Thank you so much. My name is Amy Alden. I'm an officer of Miller Dollar Hyde who leases the building just to the east of this location from Mr. Weimer. Um, and so obviously I echo his comments, but I'd like to add a little something to that, and that is we're a law firm and we have clients coming in, and whether it's just to the north of the transformer or whether it's to the west of the transformer, it's not very far from our front door. Our front door is south facing. Um, <laughs> we don't have clients coming in on the other side of the building. In addition to the fact that if you will look at the photographs that Mr. Weimer provided to you, he did show you um, the south side of the building, which shows where the entrance is. Um, there's not a photograph of it, but on the west side, there are, there's a row of windows on each floor, big picture windows just like that on the front. And so not only do we have to deal with the odors, which aren't going to be very far from our front door where we come and where our clients come in, um, we also have these windows that are going to be looking out over 240 square feet of trash space. Um, and when they have that location further to the north, not to the north of Transform, but a, med uh, but a little bit further to the north where they originally intended, and I understand that he doesn't have authority today to commit to that, but that that, that's the fairest outcome. Um, you know, I understand that they entered into a lease with an entity that didn't want it there, but that's a lease that they, you know, that's a contractual situation. Um, and I don't really think it seems quite fair <laughs> that their own tenants get a benefit um, at the expense of a neighbor. Okay, thank you. And she was, re I'll refer to this picture here. This is the building she's referring to, um, right. the upper right. Those are the big windows. And so that is actually the facade of the building that would, that's facing what she was referring to that would look out on. That's actually south facing. 
But if you oh, look, is that the entrance? Yes. I apologize. Look, That's the entrance, so it's this face here. Yes, you can see that there are windows yeah. that go up Same time. all three floors that will look out really into the trash. Okay, thank you very much. You know, it sounds to me like Chuck is absolutely right. This sounds like a dispute that needs to be um, worked out between the parties. And, and also, Chuck is right. We could, <coughs> and look, you guys look, could look at different options as far as how often you pick up the trash, <coughs> what, where the grease would be disposed of, stuff like that. Keith Paul of a good eye group who owns the restaurant at Barrios offered to have it dumped every day as an option when we were negotiating on site and that wasn't agreeable as well. So he's already offered to dump it every day or have it dumped every morning or evening before or after hours, um, but that wasn't acceptable. So we're, that, we've, we've, we've made that offer. Okay. Um, any thoughts? I want to go on record as saying that offer was never made every day. That's the first time I'm hearing of it. It was made two, maybe two, maybe three times a week. Okay. But then that, that reinforces our, our, my desire to see you guys negotiate this. Um, what are our options as far as a motion? You can approve. Uh, with the variance, you can deny it. Um, can we continue it? Uh, no, uh, the the applicant is not agreeing to a continuance. I would I would ask you to either uh, approve or deny this application, which then puts it back to the original approved location to, to BOA or to right then yeah uh, for, if, to the if, appeal. Right, if this is denied, then the other approve other administrative approval will move through the appeal process. And, and vice versa. Well, so actually. to me, I mean, if that's the case, it seems to me like that these, this location they're proposing now is, is removes it further and at least gives you a transformer barrier or something rather than just moving it north of, of that, which would put it closer and whatever to your building. I mean, I, this, this looks like a better alternative than whatever you're appealing right now. And I'll also point out, if you guys haven't, uh, haven't seen the restaurant, is the courtyard I see is is uh, a courtyard that serves a hundred has a hundred people to dine and and uh, enjoy food and drink. So the restaurant has an equal um, interest in keeping that clean and no bugs, no rodents, and and keep the the smells to absolute minimum because um, obviously that's going to directly impact their patio as much as it will. Um, that's further north than their entrance point to their building. So I, I can assure you the building ownership is committed to keeping that clean and um, as clean as they physically can. So do we have a motion? Well, ho hold on. I, I would ask these guys, you want us, if we deny this thing, then you're going to go back to the appeal process. And if it's approved, it's going to be closer to you. If we do approve this, it's going to be further away. So which way do you want to go? Well, obviously, of the two locations, this is the lesser of the two evils. Uh, if they, if I'm here, like I said, I heard for the first time that they're willing to pick up the trash every day. If they're willing to pick up the trash every day, as he just represented, um, and we can use that as some sort of this as a record to go towards that agreement, uh, then uh, I would be willing to go with the the uh, uh, position uh, to the west of the transformer. I'm not sure we can make picking up the trash a motion, but I think that in good faith, you guys are going to have to live together and get along. And I, I tell you, I have been down this road owning a building and also owning the trash. And if it's managed correctly, as I'm hearing him say it's going to do, you're going to be just fine. Well, I just, I mean, are you, are you guys still willing to pick it up every day? Yeah. Okay. If he's willing to pick it up every day, then, and it sounds like, uh, based upon what I'm hearing from this, uh, from this board, uh, that uh, I would not like the outcome of your decision here today. Uh, well, I don't think we have a choice. We've got to go one way or the other. Well, at least I'm hearing that from, from some individuals. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know. We have, we have to vote it up or down today. And so that if we vote it down, your, your appeal will go forward in uh, the Board of Adjustment. If we, if we approve it, 
then and also approve the or recommend approval to the Board of Adjustment for the the dumpster enclosure, then it be would be on the west side. Okay. So if I if I don't make anything do anything, it would and you vote today, it would at least give us time to come to some solid agreement. So we could work something out. Uh, right. You would there would still be a ten day appeal period on this decision. Okay. Okay. Well, so, okay, I'm ready to make a motion. Make it. That'd be great. Uh, I've uh, moved to approve the application on the basis that it, the project complies with the regulations and guidelines of the downtown design district zoning ordinances referenced in section C and D of the staff report with the condition that the applicant obtain a variance from the Board of Adjustment <clears throat> from the design regulations and height limitations for the front yard fences. Second. Okay. Uh, Ainsworth and... Faulkner, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Now. I also make a motion to provide a recommendation of approval of the Board of Adjustment for a variance from the design regulations and the height limitation for the front yard fences. Second. Ainsworth, Faulkner, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much for being here. I hope that works out for you all. The next item is 13, 113 Northwest 5th Street. Is the applicant present? Uh, you had a, you heard this item at your last meeting and it was continued. I wanted, whoops, I wanted to point out that there's a handout before each of you. Um, and what you got was additional information about lighting, which was brought up by um, one of the members at the last uh, meeting interior lighting versus exterior lighting in addition to this elevation got left out of your packet and I apologize for that. Um, I summarized in the staff report some revisions that occurred since you got, since you saw this last month. The structural bays were revised from 12 foot wide to 15 foot wide. The location and widths of the dry aisles were adjusted because of the structural bay uh, adjustment. Originally, there was a bump out design on the east side, which actually had a row of parking, and that has been removed, and so it's, it's uh, straight at that location, which also removed parking. Um, and that resulted in the parking count being reduced by 32. Overall footprint of the building was revised, and it actually got smaller. And when they did that, it, it created uh, an area which is not shown as landscaping, but is going to be here on the west side of the parking structure, which did not, it's, it showed up on some of their drawings, but it did not get added into the landscape plan. So you will see a condition that staff is recommending that the landscape plan come back to staff to adequately address, and I'm trying to get to that, um, adequately address that area of, of landscaping that got added. Um, which is in this location. They showed it on the site plan, but when you compare that to the landscape plan, it, 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 it hasn't caught up with that yet. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, I also, we had um, some issues at the last meeting, as you recall, that the uh, owner's representative had some issues, and so it could only be presented and not voted on, and we have confirmed that um, that is no longer the case. So this is before you today for discussion and a vote. And before you do that, I have to abstain, abstain from this. I noticed. Sorry, I should have let her speak. And um, we have a different representative from the architect's office here from Atlanta um, for you today. Great. I'm Tom Dowie with Smith Dowie Architects. And really, if we've gone through this before, um, I'll be happy to present, and, but if you want to save some time, I could just answer questions, whatever you prefer. Was anyone not here for the presentation that would like to hear it again? Yes, we had two. Okay. Okay. Um, the only issue I had was the fact that there are no, there's not even a, an attempt to engage the pedestrian in this um, parking garage. And I do have a, a pretty large issue with that. So um, if you'd like to address that, that would be fine. And, and if the owner would like to address that as well. Certainly. Um, it's the, the area to the uh, west, that parking area, 
we uh, fully intend to do a, a future building there uh, based on market conditions. Right now, Oklahoma City is in a bit of a downturn, and uh, the market is basically not there for a uh, office or multifamily proposed use for that uh, section. The intention was this is the prominent corner of the site and that we would reserve this prominent corner on both 5th and North Robinson for uh, retail at the bo bottom of that building. Um, again, until market conditions improve, it would be difficult to um, secure any other uh, retail area on the, on the site. So is this is this parking garage completely open to the to the street? On the ground level, it is visually open to the street. Yes, ma'am. You can flow right in and out of it. We did increase the sidewalk on fifth from eight feet to thirteen foot eight. Uh, it's done to uh, improve the relationship of the height of the building to the street, and uh, they are. Uh, parking on the street itself as well. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any comments or questions from the committee? Well, I think I understand, you know, the lack of engaging the pedestrian on the west side, but on the south side of the building, it's, that's a, a long stretch um, that really does not have any interaction, even though there's a large sidewalk. So. Can you speak to that? Well, we, we primarily have a lot of, uh, of access that goes on on that part of the site, if you don't mind going to the site plan. Sure. And, and so it minimizes the uh, amount of area that is really uh, available. So any active use along that edge would, would be scattered at best and really only be effective in the center part of the, the building, the other side, number the space that are numbered three on the uh, left side of that facade, right, right in there. Um, so the centerpiece uh, could possibly uh, absorb something, but we are trying to service both the Heritage Building, which was formerly the JR uh, General Record Building, and we're also trying to service the future building out, out of this parking deck. Um, the infrastructure is put into this deck for that ability. Um, the deck is designed for the flexibility between multifamily and um, the office proposed use. Um, if we were to have the active retail uses on the new building that's proposed at the prominent corner, we would um, have difficulty parking that quantity of visitor in that on this particular deck. Um, so increasing additional potential rentable square footage and decreasing parking both work against each other. Any other questions or comments? Do we have anyone from the um, audience that would like to speak? Do we have any motions? I'll move to approve the application on the basis that the project complies with the regulations and guidelines of the Downtown Design District Zoning Ordinance as referenced in Section C and D of the staff report with the conditions that A, the applicant receives a variance from the building setback regulations and B, the applicant submits a revised landscape plan reflecting all landscaped areas to staff for review and approval. Okay, that was a uh, Bates and Terrio motion. and. For the record, I will be uh, voting to deny that <laughs> against that motion, but uh, I think it's a wonderful project. I just, uh, we are having so much trouble getting active uses on, on the ground floor and of a parking garage, and we're 
we've seen so many parking garages. It is important to um, kind of stay the, the course if we can. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I have to say that um, this, I totally agree, and that the uh, plant, basic urban planning prefers to have that. I think if the market condition improves, that would actually support some effective, you know, lively, vital uses on that edge. There's also always the possibility that this development team would recognize that as a value and recognize the urban quality of that situation and, and would look at it from an uh, economic standpoint as well as very positive. So there's always the possibility of future um, uses being applied to that facade. But as I said, they would be limited just because of the drive accesses. Okay. Everybody ready to vote? We have a motion to approve the project. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That would be me. And Gigi. Uh, yeah. So uh, your project has been approved. You want to do the variance? I move to provide a recommendation of approval to the Board of Adjustment for a variance from the set building setback regulation. That was Terrio. It was uh, Bates and Terrio. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next project is 500 Northwest 6th Street. Is the applicant present? If you all have driven by the site, it's a um, very prominent location up on Walker at 6th um, that has some very um, challenging topography uh, when redeveloping it. Specifically, if you look, um, looking at the site and the change, uh, the difference in grade from here's, here's Walker at this location and here's Sixth. So you can see how much higher it is, um, especially as you go down Walker. And if you look at development that's already there, you have um, this former adjacent to the south used to be a motel and it's been converted to offices and they have a tall retaining wall at the corner. Um, you have, uh, there's also uh, a change in grade uh, along Northwest 6th as well. Um, and here's the alley view. Um, so you can kind of see going up the alley just how uh, much of a difference there is. But when you're up on the site looking across it, it almost looks like, you know, it's totally level, but you're not seeing the adjacent streets. Um, across the street to the north is Emerson School, which as you can see, has retaining walls around it. So, um, and you have the credit union, which is kind of down in a hole. Um, so you have different developments already in that area that have addressed the change in grade uh, applicable to them. Um, in the staff report, let me flip, let me get down to the site plan here. We had several issues that we discussed. Um, there were some regulation issues. There was also guideline related issues. And so, um, let me flip to this so that we can discuss that. In, um, as far as regulation related issues, we had um, an issue with the setback, as you know, it has to, it's supposed to be between zero and 10 foot from the street right of way. So this is on a corner, so it's gonna, we have to address that on both. They're allowed up to 40% greater than that, and they exceed that. Um, they provided us with that percentage, the 45% of their facade is greater than 10 foot. It goes up to 13 feet, but um, that is an issue that their options would be to um, redesign it, which is what staff would recommend, because it really needs to be up at the street. They could also apply for a variance to address um, that excess setback. Um, there, we have an issue with the site triangle that we've, we found out from the um, traffic people that the building encroachment is okay, in their opinion, because of the traffic signal, but the retaining wall was going to create some problems um, located in the right of way by their traffic uh, signal pole. And so um, this morning, the latest that I got was there is going to have to be some redesign 
because they need at least five foot to be able all the way around their traffic pole. And there was a, a commitment to we, making that design change. We accommodated um, four feet, and he wants five feet, so we're going to give him the extra. Right, and so that is uh, something that will result in uh, some type of design uh, on the retaining walls. So are you indicating that we're probably going to have to continue this? Well, a staff report recommended continuance, and, and I'm listing all of the reasons why the, the things that, in our opinion, should result in some redesign to the project. And because there's several of those, the bottom line, at, after several pages, was staff recommended um, a continuance. Um, and I, I mean, I can I can continue and list all the, the other ones I if think, you'd like me to. I think other reasons. I, um, it does sound like you might need a continuance, but but that's if not, you would that's like, that's not what we're trying to do. We we don't. Truthfully, our owners, you know, we've got leases and things that are that are going to be ending, so right. we need to expedite the process. We believe that that the the setback, and, and I've, I've calculated the setback of, that, which is being discussed, of we don't meet the 10 foot. The it's an undulating surface, okay? So it's got it's got ins and outs, and, and which adds visual interest and character that to the to that north facade, okay? And we're actually. Um, 55% of our building was in, is within three foot eight of the right of way. So it's a little bit misleading to say we just don't meet it from, from that standpoint. We, we do on the entire, for, for, the, for the aggregate of the entire facade. It, it's within, not, it's not misleading. It doesn't meet it. It's a regulation. It's a requirement. It doesn't meet it. It's black and white. The, the average across our entire facade, which is 163 feet, nine inches, is uh, if you take that number and then and divide it by what divided by the, the the entire facade, we're actually an average of six feet away from from the from the right of way. So. Okay, let's not argue about that. Um, so there are several things that are involved in and potentially um, pushing this toward a continuance. Do we want to talk about the project and and see if? I mean, the, the, uh, the setback would be one variance. Setback is a variance. Uh, additionally, uh, they are proposing a sign on the retaining wall, which is in the right-of-way. That's another variance that they need. Um, and I, those, I would those like are the two, right? Uh, yeah, those are the only two variances we identified. I would like to hear the committee's comments on the grade change and the retaining wall and the relationship and how that affects the relationship of the building to the sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. Certainly. Yeah. I, and I, in what I've, I, I don't know if you guys have seen, have you seen the design statement that I wrote? Yes, they have it in their packet. Has everybody heard it? I Let guess. me get back up. Um, and, I'm, and, and if, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead. Right I'm just going to read that because that kind of gives a, a general synopsis of, of where we're, the intent of where we were headed with this. So uh, the proposed building is located on 500 Northwest 6th Street, takes advantage of the immaculate views of downtown Oklahoma City by elegantly rising ab above surrounding buildings to not only make a statement but to define the street corner of 6th and Walker, an ever-present and intended consequence of urban environment. The design concept is derived from the elegance, elegance and style pre present in typical Art Deco style architecture. The smooth look of limestone is emulated with cast stone veneer panels and ephus accents. Uh, the modulated elements create a rhythm and balance projecting strength and solitude for each of its four facades. The building is positioned opportunistically on the site, utilizing its height for views and its position for natural lighting that will flood the interior spaces of the building. Linear window elements emphasize verticality and provide surface ornamentation to exterior facades of the building. Um, obviously, there are, there are several factors involved in positioning of the building. You know, the requirement of the 10 foot, so we so we push it up onto that on, onto that side. Uh, we've got existing factors related to the uh, the street. We actually have 13 feet of fall across that side. It's inherent to the site, and it's there because that's what the street does. We're not changing the street, so that's those are those are factors that we can't we can't change. So part of the cascading effect of of what we're trying to do on the 
on what would be the east side with the, um, the retaining walls is to elegantly get you back to the earth, elegantly transition you back to the earth with, with landscaping and, and things like that, uh, you know, that, uh, that show kind of a, a uh, transition back to the sidewalk space so that it's not so abrupt. Um, the, you know, like I said, on the, on the setback, the, the setback issue, we've pushed in and out uh, in order to make that facade a, a three-story facade. Let's consider the fact that this is, this is three stories and, you know, 35 feet tall facade. If, if reduced in the, the undulation of, the, of those setbacks, to me, makes it a less interesting building. That facade is is relying on on that that north facade is relying on that. So um, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you said something. So um, and then and then we also use landscaping and landscaping elements to push um, again to to put to ground the uh, uh, our uh, building to the earth and, and kind of bring it back from a transition standpoint. Um, the, what are the other issues here? Do you want to hear what the committee says about the I'm sorry? Design? Would you like to hear what the committee absolutely like yeah. to say yeah, about yeah, the design? Absolutely. I have a couple clarification questions okay. before we get into discussion. Um, the design statement uh, included um, some material definitions, including EFIS. Um, in the building elevations on the drawings, it's it's the cornice, it's the cornice pieces at the top that won't obviously we're not going to support those. So it's the cornice. It, it will be, it's it's it'll be look it'll look it's going to emulate cast stone. That's what that's what the the effort is. And so thirty you know thirty feet and it'll be the same color, same smooth ish texture as what's going to be on the facade. So it's it's supposed to be a monolithic. Um, monolithic piece that we're going to take advantage of that material so that we don't have to support and it. And it doesn't exceed the amount that's allowed? And it does not. Okay. In the guidelines? It's just that the top band, essentially, of what you see of the capital building. <clears throat> and then the, the two signs that are on the north side of the building, those, those yeah. do meet the guidelines regarding square footage? Yeah, they're, they're not in, there are no, they're not exceeding the square okay. footage. The, the only issue with signage, although it's, and it doesn't show in the rendering, is along the Walker facade is where they're having the tiered retaining walls, which are located within the right-of-way, and they're proposing a sign. And let me and we're, and we're, we're, I'm willing to concede that if that's an issue. That, that piece of it, I mean, again, we're trying, we're trying to transition you from those elevations down and thought, well, we'll take advantage of, no. of this wall and put something on my, it. My, my question yeah, relates more to the signage on the north side of the building. Yeah, no, it, it's, they're yeah. fine. Um, and I apologize, I'm trying to find. I, I just see it very likely to see both those signs at the same time. Um, and they seemed rather large, but if they meet, if they're meeting the guidelines, then. No, it, it's not a percentage. It, it, it's actually, it's based on the width of the building and how far back it's set. So they're allowed in this area, they're allowed quite a lot of square footage, and, and so they're fine on square footage. The retaining wall. I believe it shows on 301, maybe. Is it 301? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay, that's, thank you. That's, that's, that's what we're talking that's about. That's what I was looking this. for. They're proposing it at this location on the retaining wall. You can see it, and here's the elevation you were referring to on those two that are at each end. Uh, I just had a couple questions as well. Uh, what is the color of the window mullions? That the window mullions, mm -hmm. be, it's going to be uh, uh, anodized aluminum. Anodized aluminum? Okay. Um, and similarly, on and what is the articulation and the vertical fenestration, is that also stone or is that a different material? material? That, is, that is stone. That is stone, okay. Um, and your signage color uh, is black, is that right? It, it should be anodized aluminum as well. That's also anodized. That's okay, backlit aluminum. Okay, I see that. Uh, 
I guess I would just make a couple comments on the sign unless anyone has questions. Um, I agree that the um, articulation on the north side helps the building. Um, I think it actually looks pretty nice and it's nice to, with such a uniform material um, to have some of that relief to help break up that elevation. So I do like that you did that um, in the design. Uh, the, I guess the only comment I have about it is, is the three foot difference that difficult to achieve, you know, just to bring out those recesses, the three feet. And, it, and I'm, I'm pretty tight on budget. That's my issue. If, if I were to shift that around, it's a major shift in the plan um, because I've got to make that, I've got to make that up. I've got, to, I've got to take that square footage back out of the building. It's not, it's not going to be a situation. I'm at 20,000 square feet. We're trying to hover in that range of $5 million. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a tall task from a, from a bidding standpoint. And then with our site, site considerations and all the retaining walls and stuff that's kind of come upon us as well, um, it's, it's, a, it's a taller task than, than, than I think is worth the, uh, the result. The resultant, I don't think, is going to give us, I mean, literally, we're talking three feet. I mean, you're talking three feet. I mean, is that on a, on a 40, on a, you know, 35-foot tall building, three foot, you know, does that really give us anything? Does that really give you anything? And I understand the guidelines, so I'm not, I'm not disputing what the guideline is. But, um, and that's ask. actually a regulation. To, that's why it's as much of a, I mean, guidelines, you have the ability to um, approve. <clears throat> differences in the guidelines without a variance, but that will require right. that was one of one of the things that will require a variance. Um, I like the uh, I'll just say that that I, I'm kind of amazed. In fact, it's the rendering is a little deceiving because it looks like the site is flat and that Absolutely. is an extremely being familiar with that that site that's an extremely uh, steep slope against Walker, but if you can accomplish some of the things that you're showing, I, I think that's, that's really a nice use of that piece of property. And, um, and I, I think that the setback is probably uh, necessary for this particular piece of property as far as being, it's just, it's going to be difficult to, to Get the grades to work on that, but and it, it has been honestly. This is we've not come to this uh, from easily as well. I mean, we're we're working with it. Um, just for your consideration, since um, I'll list off the things that will need variances. Okay, if because I, I we, try, I'm trying to listen to how you're. Can you list it in, in a list instead of elaborating on each yes, one of I'll them? Unless we have them. questions. Um, as currently proposed. Mm -hmm. The items that will need variances if you decide to vote on it today is, we, is the, um, the set front setback, as we've already discussed. Um, they'll need a variance from the pro prohibition on signs in the right-of-way. Um, if they don't reduce the diameter of the perforation in the metal on the dumpster enclosure, they'll need a variance on that as well. We concede that and we'll reduce that. Um, the... Other conditions that would not require variances would be the redesign uh, to accommodate the city traffic engineer on the retaining walls that they've already uh, referenced. Um, and that those are the issues that um, there are others that we brought up in the staff report that you read the deal with guidelines that we can discuss individually if you would like. The sign on the retaining wall, the retaining wall is in the right of way. It's off of their private property. So, so, so you need two one on setback and one on there. That's uh, correct. Correct. Because he, yeah, he just said yeah, he'll reduce I'm, that I'm, one, and I have so I have that It's as simple as that for us. Correct, although there will be some wording for conditions to address the items he's agreed to do if, if you get to that point that I can help you with. Uh, on the setback, I, I share the opinion that um, the, the undulation of the building, uh, it contributes to the, the overall design and, and helps uh, with that. And generally speaking, this building addresses 
uh, the street. It is at the corner of the property rather than in the center of the property, and I think that's what um, it, that's beneficial to to the site to locate the building where it is to have portions of the building that get within three or four feet of the property line. So the I I share in the um, the opinion that the setback is. Um, at least personally, not, not an issue to me, as shown. I agree. I think it's very, very attractive, and, and I think it's going to be a great addition for that corner. I, I just have a, I have a quick question on landscaping. Connie, have you looked at this? I mean, are you going to do some screening on the walker side where the parking lot is? Or are you going to be able to see there, that? Uh, along that uh, it's more, I wouldn't say necessarily screening, but it's, it's, it's a transition. Now, the, the height is, I mean, it's, it's physically screened from a pedestrian standpoint. Absolutely. In, in, all, of, in all of the, uh, the retaining walls, there's plant material. That's, that's designed. Is this the right one? Okay. Uh, on that east elevation, oh, sorry, we still, are you on landscape? Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I will say that I think this is a great building, but I don't think it's not going to look like this because you've got like an eight foot tall retaining wall that you're really going to be facing on the street. As, and, it, as it goes. And I realize that you've got a big drop, but I don't think that the retaining wall as designed complements your building at all. I think the material, which this is really a residential material, doesn't look anything like cast stone. True. Um, it's too small in scale compared to the, the large scale of the building. It's also designed as a curvy, linear, also residential look as opposed to your building, which is, a, you know, it's got a really prominent facade to it. It's a juxtaposition. I mean, that's, that's the thought there is that, that we would, that, you know, it's, it's a nat those are natural. That's a, those are natural types of things. Our building is obviously a man-made man thing, so we're trying to make that transition back but so you're not in a natural way. environment. You're in a downtown streetscape, and, and, and I feel like that doesn't really sure. fit. Whether you've got plants in it or not, sure. um, I don't think it. And do you have the landscape plan, by the way? Oh, I do. A, A101 it's is not the landscape plan. No, so. I know. It had some. It's, it's, While you're looking for it, I wanted to kind of e echo That's it, that it? remark, because earlier we were talking about engaging the pedestrians, yes. uh, engaging, engaging pedestrians, and to me, you know, one of the comments was, you, well, yeah, you have this retaining wall that's going to be, I think, taller than, what, what's the footage of the retaining wall at the max the, height? At the height, five foot, the highest, the highest Um No, actually at the alley, I think it's seven or eight foot tall. Oh, was it, as it goes detail. back to the alley. I'm sorry, on the um, street, on the actual yeah. street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a big and, drop. And yeah, I've got 13 feet of fall across that site. So yes. Yeah. And I, I like the building, sure. too. I'm just concerned about how do you handle that. And, of course, you have a budget, and so your only other option really would be to have kind of a tiered um, building and, and understand that adds quite a bit to the cost. But um, yeah, I share some of the concerns too as far as the, the garden wall look. It's very suburban as opposed to this, you know, grand um, building that I think is a great fit for the area. And I, I, I like the building itself. I'm just okay. have similar concerns as far as, again, going back to the pedestrian, uh, how, how it interfaces with the pedestrians and, and then just how it, that, that garden wall look, and is it appropriate for kind of the overall grand feel of, of the building? Okay. I agree. I think that's an excellent comment, Connie, and I, I think it detracts from the um, really a, a very nice formal presence of this building. I think, I think it really detracts. I would prefer to see something else. Okay. I think that's a very casual suburban look. So are you open to redesign? Um, I think there's some probably inexpensive or as cost effective as this. I'm not sure, but I, I think the building's beautiful, I, personally. I think it's, I mean, the, the cut limestone and all that, I mean, just it's my sweet spot. I love it. Right. But I do think that you've got a real, you know, um, it, it doesn't complement your building. And I think it's going to be a pedestal that kind of holds that thing up and, and 
really. Uh, so I would, I'm be willing to try to make a motion oh, that's uh, cool. to approve it uh, with the setback, variance with the condition they get a variance on the setback from the Board of Adjustment. And I don't know if the uh, retaining wall needs to come back to the committee or Seems staff like. can do it, or I would ask my fellow committee members. It seems like the retaining wall sh should probably come back. I, people have expressed some pretty um, specific Okay, I'll make that motion with the condition you come back and, and okay, with can, a better design for the retaining wall. If I might list some things so that we don't miss something in the motion. Yeah. Um, that uh, condition they get a variance from the setback, that they get um, a variance on the prohibition of signs in the right of way. He said he'd take that off. That's off. Totally Absolutely. Off. Okay. We'll take yeah. it off. Um, that uh, condition that they would, and I'll just read this, they reduce the diameter of the perforations. You agreed to that. He's in the metal, yeah, he agreed, but we need to make that a condition. Okay, um, that's part of the motion. Or to no larger than 0.25 inches or add black mesh on the inside. That has part of the project. Absolutely. I can show you that one. Um, as well as that they receive the approval from the traffic engineer that they're working towards on their retaining wall. That's part of the motion. That's and that, part of your motion. And that's going to get, it's, it's, well, with, with the apparent redesign of the, of the uh, retaining walls, this will all kind of wash. And obviously, you know, that comment from, from the traffic engineer came after we had kind of gone down this road. Obviously, we'll take it into account and get all that resolved. And we'll get you something better. And if, you know, um, maybe, I, maybe I can give you a call, Connie, and we can kind of discuss this. I'm, I'm, no, no, we can't, can't do that. We're not allowed to do no. that? Okay, okay. And, and then the last one is that the, they bring a redesign of the retaining wall back to DDRC. That's part of my motion. Yes, that's what I thought. So I greatly appreciate your attitude about this. I think it's a lovely project, and I really, I drive by there every day, and I think it's going to be a really spectacular deal. So I, that's my motion. Okay. Did everybody understand that motion? I'm not going to repeat it, but I understood all of those things, and I second it. Okay. Paula, do you need help? Okay. The landscaping uh, and retaining, retaining wall. wall. No, the, that can, oh, I guess so. We should continue with the in a second. Okay. But there is, there are conditions that they will reduce the diameter of the perforation, perforation in the metal screening and in, in for the dumpster. Yeah. I've got that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Before we have motion, we have a we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Now we need a, a board of adjustment. And, and I, just to clarify what you're thinking that you're going to say is that um, you're, going to be <laughs> you're going to be recommending to the Board of Adjustment um, uh, a, a variance for uh, I'll, I'll a move, setback. I'll and move to provide a recommendation of approval to the Board of Adjustment for a variance from the building setback regulation. Okay. I don't okay. know if I introduced myself when I came up here. I'm Sean Lorg with Critton Rink, by the way. I, I know that's backwards, but I, I think I forgot Welcome. to introduce myself. So thank you, guys. I, I do spent appreciate some time it. With us. And like I said, it's you know, uh, it's it's kind of it's constructive criticism, and and that's fine. That doesn't that doesn't bother me at all one bit. Can I'm, I? I'm very proud of the building, and I think we'll accommodate you. Okay. Can yeah. I clarify the continuation of those items that Paula was talking about? Was that part of that original motion? No, we're we going to have it. We're going to have another motion thank for you. that. Thank um, we have a motion and a second to um, do to provide a, a recommendation of approval to the Board of Adjustment. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Okay, now we need a, a motion for a continuance of the um, landscaping and the retaining walls. Yep. I move to continue the landscaping and retaining wall portion of the project to the December. Well, if it's if, December, I, I have to have it by next Tuesday. So I don't think. I don't have, think that's going to slow the, gonna, the process down. No, I don't think so. so. We, I think we can. I think I can get. I think I can do January. 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 To the January meeting. Okay. Okay. Do we, and Faulkner seconded that. All in favor? Any opposed? Thanks for being here and you thanks guys. for working with Thank us you. on that. We have. Uh, no other business.
We have communications, the administrative um, approval report. I think we're going to just have to read those ourselves. You look like you want to talk about no. it. Oh, no. Okay. Nothing at all. Um, do we have any comments from the planning department staff? A reminder of the December 9th commissioner training. Breakfast is 7.30, lunch, lots of programming in between. So I've heard that we're having a real breakfast. That's, we're having I don't a know real, exactly what a real breakfast protein is. Protein and dairy and fiber. And that is the, the whole reason you should Not necessarily it. in that order. And, and caffeine. Cox? It's at the Cox Center, rooms 9 and 10. We're going to send out a update. We're going to send out a reminder with the agenda attached. Um, we can, if you park in Sheridan Walker, we can uh, uh, give you a parking pass, but we can't, you, we can't pay for your parking at the Cox or on the street. Okay, the next meeting is December 15th. Oh wait, any, any comments from the committee members other than Happy Thanksgiving? One week and it's 80 degrees outside. Just, just wait till Saturday. Is it going to be colder? Thank goodness. We need to have fall. The next meeting is December 15th. Um, applications were submitted to staff for the next meeting by uh, two days ago. So any? Oh, we have a meeting, yes, ma'am. We have many? Um, we have the two today that were continued. Um, and we have one from uh, that skipped a month that was continued. Um, so we have three or four, five, something like that right now. So bring some snacks. We are adjourned.